Hi everyone, I uh, want to give you an overview of how Google Analytics works uh, and how you can use it to understand what our website does uh, and any other website that you may choose to use uh, Google Analytics with. Google Analytics is a very powerful tool. Um, it has the potential to provide uh, lots of different information in lots of different ways and uh, how you use it will depend on the needs that you and your organization have. Uh, and I'm going to give you a, a quick overview uh, and introduce you to some of the uh, initial elements that you might want to look at. Uh, once you've had a chance to uh, look at those and become more familiar with the environment, uh, you may choose to, uh, to look further. Uh, it's a very, very powerful tool. I only in this introduction uh, can introduce you to some of the basics. Um, but you can explore the rest uh, yourself. Uh, so the first thing I want to do uh, is to introduce you to the page that you'll see uh, when you first log in to Google Analytics. And if you have uh, now uh, logged in and, uh, uh, and you are at this overview page, uh, you'll see something similar to what you can see on your screen now. Uh, I want to draw your attention to a few aspects of this. The first is um, the overview uh, chart that you can see here. Uh, this uh, initially will probably show uh, the number of sessions that there have been on your, uh, on your website. If we click on the little arrow here, uh, we can see that we're able to show uh, a few different types of information. We can look at the percent of new sessions, the average session duration, the bounce rate, the pages per session, uh, the page views, uh, the sessions, and the number of users, uh, different users who have looked at our site. Uh, definitions for each of these terms can be found if we mouse over the little question mark which is here. So we can see that percent of new sessions uh, is an estimate of the percentage of first-time visits uh, to the site. The uh, next uh, statistic is the average length of a session. The bounce rate uh, is the percentage of single page visits, that is visits in which the person left the site uh, from the entrance page without interacting with the page. So with the page that they landed on. So entrance page doesn't necessarily mean uh, the home page for the site, it could be any, it's just the page they landed on. Uh, the pages per session um, is the average number of pages viewed during a session. Uh, page views is next. Uh, it's the number of pages that have been viewed. Sessions uh, are the, uh, the number of sessions uh, which are a period of time in which the user is actively engaged uh, with the website. And then finally users, uh, users that have, had, that have had at least one session within the selected date range. And this includes both new uh, and returning users. Uh, so this, this is the number of different people who have used it. So we can select any of these things to show inside the chart. I'll click for the moment on uh, page view so you can see that the chart has changed. And the second thing that we can do up here is that we can select uh, metrics to compare. So we can add another metric to this chart if we wish. Uh, so we can look at, uh, we could compare the number of uh, page views perhaps with the number of users. So I'll add that to this. Uh, we can see that the scales uh, are on either end of the bar chart. Uh, so these, these uh, line, uh, the line graph here uh, is, does not, uh, is not on the same scale as the other line graph. And that's something that can be a little bit confusing, uh, but the scales are at either end here um, and, uh, and show you uh, the page views and the users. I'll uh, simplify this chart. I'll take out the, uh, the second uh, metric here uh, and I'll next refer to the top right of the bar chart. We can see here that you can select the different ways that you're going to view the data. We're viewing it by day at the moment, but we could view it by week, by month and hourly uh, simply by clicking on these buttons. Uh, if we go to the top of the page, we can see that the date range that the chart covers uh, is, uh, is detailed here. And this date range is used for all of the different statistics that might appear 
uh, inside Google Analytics uh, for, uh, that you wish to see. So in this case, uh, the course started that we're referring to at the moment on September the 22nd. So we'll shorten the date range to the date which uh, is uh, uh, the, the date that the course started on uh, to yesterday. Uh, we can set here to include uh, the date today, um, but we'll just include till yesterday because we're only part way through today. Uh, so once we've changed those dates and we can change, we can select any date, any range of dates for which the uh, Google Analytics has gathered data. But once we've done this, we want to click uh, apply and we'll see that the chart has changed and now shows uh, the period for which the course has been running. Uh, and uh, this may be something we would wish to do simply to understand the impact uh, that the course has had on the traffic for the blog. If we then underneath here, uh, we can see a number of other things. We can see overall statistics for the number of sessions for this period, uh, the number of users, the page views, the pages per session, uh, the average session duration, the bounce rate, and the percent of new sessions that people have uh, that people have had. If we next uh, look below this chart, and I'll scroll on this screen, uh, we can see some basic information. Uh, on the left hand side here, we can see the countries uh, that people have come to the blog from. And if we click on country and territory, we'll see the information appear here. And of course, uh, as would likely be the case, Canada uh, is has had 46.36% of the sessions on the site. And we can see the other countries uh, from which we've had visitors, um, or the top 10 of those uh, are listed here. We can also see the city that they've come from. Again, not surprisingly, Toronto is the biggest city in Canada, and uh, therefore, uh, and we have uh, more sessions from there than anywhere else. Uh, given that the program's being run from Waterloo and that the main target uh, marketing area that we've had for the program is Waterloo, um, that the, the Waterloo region uh, has had 135 sessions is not a surprise. And you can see the other uh, areas here. As we look down this menu, uh, we can see that the, uh, we can see the operating systems that people are using, uh, the browsers that they use to hit the website. Uh, this may be useful for us in terms of the design uh, that we have for our website. Some designs are better for different browsers. Um, we can also see uh, the operating systems. Not surprisingly, Windows and Mac are at the top, but again, there are a number of other ones here. Uh, we can see the service providers that people have used. We can see the if they're using a, if they're connecting with a mobile device. We can see the uh, uh, the mobile device system that they have used. Uh, we, again, we can see their mobile service provider and we can see the screen resolution that they have viewed the site with. And again, this information is useful to us uh, simply in terms of the design of the, uh, uh, of the site itself. Uh, but that uh, provides you with an overview of, I think, some of the key things that you'll see uh, inside Google Analytics. You'll also see um, that there are a number of other menu items on the left-hand side here. Uh, the first is uh, shortcuts. You can see up here uh, a button that, that, is, uh, that says shortcut on it. And you, you can prepare your own custom reports um, by selecting from these items here uh, and, uh, and elsewhere. And, uh, and save that report as a shortcut. So if you want to have a custom report that you're going to look at on a regular basis, simply select shortcut and it will appear on the left-hand side of your screen. You can also um, look at a number of other uh, factors here. Uh, and these can be explored under the heading of audience, which is indented uh, inside this menu. You can see demographics, uh, interests, uh, ge geography that people have, uh, have viewed the website from, their behavior on the website itself, 
the types of technology that they've connected with. We've seen some of that in the audience overview. Uh, we can see more detail of the mobile devices and mobile behavior. Uh, we can see some benchmarking and so on here. Uh, but the overview that I've given you so far should be sufficient uh, to provide you with, uh, uh, with, with, uh, uh, with a good start in understanding the behavior of people who are visiting our uh, website. Uh, the w one final thing that I want to refer to here uh, is this, uh, uh, this button here, uh, real time. And this shows us real time behavior uh, on the website. So if we click on real time, this menu here will, uh, will appear and we can click on overview and we can see that at the moment there is one person uh, who is on the, uh, on the website uh, at present um, and uh, we can see the pages that they are looking at and here we can see it's the importance of listening page. Uh, we can see where they come from if we look at this map. Uh, we can see that they are in uh, Florida, it looks like, West Palm Beach. Uh, if, we, uh, if we mouse over this uh, particular uh, graphic. Um, and there are other things that we can see here. Clearly, if we had a higher volume of traffic, there would be more that we could learn from this. Um, but the real-time uh, uh, area of uh, Google Analytics uh, is quite interesting. And certainly, uh, if you're running a live event from your website, uh, where with lots of people attending it, this may well be a uh, this might be a, a more useful, uh, a more useful area. But that's an overview uh, of Google Analytics. And uh, I'll be pleased to answer any further questions that you might have about this, uh, either in the course seminars uh, or in the uh, discussion area, Ask the Instructor.